Lesson 3. Read pages 20 through 22 of the 10 minute Bible journey. You tell the Bible account to your teacher. Then you can copy the key verse here. You can also draw a picture for this account. You may copy the picture in the book or draw one of your own. You may color your picture too. Noah led his family in building the ark. Many pre-flood people were very intelligent and skillful. Noah builds the ark. The worldwide flood brought a tragic end to the perfect beginning. Family stories in Genesis revealed that the worldwide catastrophe known as Noah's flood was unleashed less than 2,000 years after creation. Although it is clear that there were many people living by the time, all humanity except one family followed the rebellion of Adam's sin against God. Death, suffering, and hate filled the earth. And by the time of the flood, the thoughts of men were evil continually. God loves righteousness, but he hates evil. He was not surprised when Adam sinned or the case later when Cain killed his brother Abel. The Creator was ready for what would happen, and now it was time for a massive step in his plan for man's salvation and creation's restoration. Beginning when Noah was 500, this preacher of righteousness and his wife were blessed with three sons. The first, Jephthah, was born 100 years before the flood. Shem was born two years later. Then Ham. As Noah and his wife trained their sons to obey and praise the Creator, the boys matured into manhood. God tells us in the Bible that Noah followed God's ways, so it is reasonable to assume that he loved his wife and trained his children in righteousness. Japheth, Shem, and Ham must have respected their parents and followed their instructions with care. Genesis chapter 6 through 9 documents that God told Noah to build a massive ship called an ark and instructed him to build it 300 cubits by 50 cubits by 30 cubits with three levels. That's roughly 510 feet long by 85 feet wide by 51 feet high. God told Noah to build it out of a specific type of wood and to cut it inside and out with pitch, which was probably based on the set of trees in order to waterproof and preserve the wood extra well. It is likely that God gave Noah many other details too. Because the world was exceedingly wicked, Noah and his family were surrounded by God hating. Surely he was scoffed as a crazy man, but he stood firm and obeyed anyway. Considering both the man's sinfulness of his culture and the magnitude of the task before him, Noah's obedience is perhaps the greatest example of persistent faith in all of scripture. It took many years to complete the huge ark. We don't know how many were spent warning people or harvesting timber or actually building. But from the day when God declared that he would destroy man from the face of the earth until the flood started, 120 years passed. Noah's oldest son, Jeff, was 100 when the flood came, still young among the men of the time. Noah's three hard working sons were undoubtedly strong. Although researchers are confident that Noah and his family could have built the ark on their own, it is quite possible that Noah employed and continued to warn labor lawyers 
and the believing relatives as well. We know from Genesis chapter 4 that even before the flood, skilled tradesmen were making things out of metal. They were smart. In addition, the use of strong animals and labor-saving inventions such as fleas, cranes, and wagons for the heavy lumber are pervasive. After all, mental and physical abilities of the people of Noah's day were much closer to the original perfection of Adam and Eve than to the same perfect minds and bodies of humans today. Moreover, because people lived considerably longer before the flood, they were able to experience, recall, and put to use far more than we can now. It is likely that we vastly underestimate the abilities and vision of Noah and the countless other pre-flood people. Here are the primary passages, which Genesis chapter 6 through chapter 9. And here is the key verse. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man and whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. Let's wrap up with prayer. Our Father, thank you for telling Noah to build the ark. He was such a great example of faith and dedication. With all the sin and evil that filled the world in his time, even worse than today, it must have been incredibly easy to be drawn into sin and not to stay faithful to you in the 600 years he lived before the flood. Please help me to have faith that overcomes the pressure of this world like no one's. In the name of Jesus we pray, Amen. Exercise 1, Day 11, Map Study Look at this map and answer on this question. Number 1. What is the state capital of Arizona? It's Phoenix. Number 2. If you draw from the state capital to Flagstaff, what direction would you head? North. Number three, what major highway would you travel on? 17. Number four, what two directions would you travel if you drove from Flagstaff to the Grand Canyon Village? Northwest. Number five. If you draw from the state capital to Tucson, what two direction would you travel? South and east. Number six. What major highway would you drive on to get from Hallbrook to Kickman? Forty. Bonus question number seven. What city do you think has the highest population and why? Maybe Phoenix because it has the more roads around it than any other city. Exercise 2, day 12. Pronouns. A pronoun takes the place of one or more nouns. Pronouns can take the place of people or things. They can be singular or plural. So let's study the chart. 
We have singular pronouns and plural pronouns. In singular, we have I, you, it, me, she, her, he, him. These all are for one person only. In plural pronouns, we have us, you, we, them, and they. They are need to be more than one person. Now let's look at the difference between the same sentence written with and without a pronoun. Which one sounds better? Noah worked to build the ark for 120 years of his life. Noah worked to build the ark for 120 years of Noah's life. The first sentence sounds better because this sentence is using two Noahs. In English grammar rules, we don't like repeating the same word again and again. And the first sentence is way simpler. Now, let us practice. Write a sentence using a pronoun. She gave me a chocolate. Indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns and in body or one. For the example, someone was loud. Someone is an indefinite pronoun. It's like this. Everyone. Everybody. Someone, somebody, we have anyone, anybody, we have no one, nobody. So let's try to write a sentence using these. Choose one of them. Okay, let's choose everybody. Everybody went outside to play the soccer. Exercise 2, day 12, antecedent. An antecedent is the noun or nouns the pronoun stands for. Study this example. The Lord was sorry he had made man. Here's the question. What is the antecedent the pronoun he stands for? He stands for the Lord. Let's do one more. Jenny was happy that she got A plus in her test. What does she stand for? Jenny. And this is antecedent. Now let's study about possessive pronouns. Remember possession shows ownership. Possessive pronouns can be singular or plural. 
we do not add apostrophe s to apostrophe pronouns this time. Study the chart. Singular possessive pronouns and plural possessive pronouns. We have my, which for I, your, for you, her, same for, which for she. Now let's study possessive pronouns. Remember, possession shows ownership. Possessive pronouns can be singular or plural. We do not add apostrophe s to possessive pronouns. Let us study the chart. We have singular possessive pronouns and plural possessive pronouns. My, which for I, your for you, her for she, he for he, it for it. And we have your for you, our for we, their for they. Sometimes you can be the word, you can be only one person, or sometimes you can be more than one person. And let's look at this example. His trumpet was loud. His is a possessive pronoun. We do not add apostrophe s to the pronoun. Now, let us write a sentence using possessive pronouns. Her back was wet because of rain. Indefinite possessive pronouns. We add apostrophe s to indefinite possessive pronouns. Remember, indefinite pronouns end in body or one. For example, someone's trumpet was loud. Someone is an indefinite pronoun. We add apostrophe s to the indefinite pronoun. Write a sentence using an indefinite possessive pronoun. This is everyone's classroom. Exercise 2, B12. Pronouns that stand alone. Some possessive pronoun can stand alone. What belongs to the possessive pronoun does not have to follow it. Let's study this chart. Possessive pronouns that can stand alone. My, yours, ours, his, hers, theirs. Study the example. Let's use the pronoun his in two ways. Study the example. God saves his people through the ark. In this sentence, the pronoun his is used to show ownership of the people. The glory is all his. In this sentence, the pronoun he stands alone. Notice it is also a singular pronoun. Now, try to write a sentence using a possessive pronoun that can stand alone. This book is mine. Exercise 3, day 13. We can combine the sentences in different ways. Let's try a few. Think about which one is most effective. Noah worked a long time to build a big boat. He had to prepare the boat to feed people and animals. He had to store food and water. Next. 
Noah worked a long time to build a boat. He had to prepare the boat with food and water to feed people and animals. Third one. Noah worked a long time to build a big boat that would store food and water for people and animals. Which of these sentences do you think is most effective? I would choose third one because it's most shortest, which is simple. And the sentence is not really choppy like this. So I think third one is the most effective. Now it is your turn. Read the sentences and combine them to recall the passage in the most effective way. I will do one for you guys. Noah beat the ark. Noah won the people. Noah built the ark, and he won the people. Exercise 4, day 14. Read the pages 23 through 25 of the 10-minute Bible journey. Recall the Bible account to your teacher. Write down the six main points of the passage you read, and make sure to copy the key verse. God sends the animal. The ark was finished with hundreds of tons of food stored inside. But what about the animal? Once the ark's massive hull was complete, it may have taken several more years to finish the cavernous interior. To help keep the animal safe and more easily managed on the violent ocean, Noah and his family constructed rooms and probably stalls, cages, coops, and aviaries, plus their own living quarters. A few animals required large spaces, but the average size of a creature was about as big as a ship. Since God created animals to eat plants, and we know from the fossil record that the earth before the flood had a lush abundance, their descent to the ark probably did not prey upon one another. In addition, because God only selected representatives of each time, not of each species, there was plenty of room on the ark for all of them and for the food and other supplies. Many reptiles and some mammals grow throughout their lives, so God may have directed to the ark the youngest of those that were able to reproduce. The Bible says that God sent pairs of every kind of bird and at least two of every landing dwelling air breeding animal, which obviously would have included a pair of each of the dinosaur times since dinosaurs were land animals. Noah surely used many of the pre-flood world's amazing innovations as well, such as clever ways to capture, store, and distribute water. He also had to build waste disposal systems, ways to maximize life, and ways to flow fresh air throughout the huge ship. In preparation, it was necessary to purchase or plant, harvest, and store huge stocks of grain, hay, and other food. Noah's family likely dried berries, crushed grapes, and jams, and wine, and pressed olives and other fruits and vegetables for oil. They must have also taken many different spices, sweeteners, like honey and syrups, and seeds to reestablish agriculture. They brought bedding, clubbing, tools, and reaping the cores and 
including the history of Adan plus much more. Then when everything was ready, seven days before the flood began, God did something that surely amazed any mocking onlookers. From near and far, by God's supernatural call, male and female of every kind of everything, land, animal, and bird alike. The procession plodded, crawled, scurried, hopped, flew, and perhaps glittered through the door, possibly for days. In striking parallel to how God calls men and women to receive the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, God chose each specific animal to escape the impending judgment. There was no coughing, capturing, or gender checking needed. God called them, and they responded from all over the earth with only original sentiment, and they entered the Ark of Salvation. The procession may have caused shock, scoffers to stand in astonishment and wonder if the flood that Noah had been warning about was about to take place. The Bible tells us in Genesis 6 that after the animals entered the ark, Noah's family kept them alive. The simple innovation that would make caretaking easier, such as ways to keep them fed and cages free of waste for extended periods, the family of eight could certainly have tended all the animals. Scientists who have studied how many different kinds of animals and birds there were before the flood agree that creatures would require only about one third of the ark. This would leave sufficient room for food, supplies, and possibly to prove to others that there was room for them as well if they had repented. The worldwide flood was about to start, yet even with clear warnings that judgment was imminent, the people did not repent. Sadly, that is how it will be before Jesus suddenly returns like a thief in the night. Please read through the primary passages from your Bible. It's Genesis 6, 1 through chapter 7, verse 16. And here's the key verse. Of clean animals, of animals that are unclean, of birds, and of everything that creeps on the earth. Two by two they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. Genesis chapter 7, verse 8 to 9. Let's wrap up with prayer. Father, thank you for rescuing Noah's family and all the animals that you sent to the ark. The whole world was against you, but you decided to start over with just righteous Noah and his family and the huge treasure chest of animals. Lord, please guide me to live for you as Noah did. Please help me to obey you and share about your mighty words to my friends and loved ones. In the name of Jesus we pray, Amen. And here is the picture of Noah's Ark era. The arrival of so many different animals surely worried any onlookers. Even so, no one repented of their sinfulness. So sad. Exercise 5, Day 15 Syllables We have been learning about syllables a lot. Let's learn more about syllables. Remember, you can look up what we have learned about syllables in the back of the book, in the spelling rules and exception section. Special ball pattern. Let's look at some special ball pattern. When two balls next to each other have two different sounds, the first ball is usually long. Divide between the balls. For example, ruin. Ruin. Ball teams are treated like one ball when the first ball is long and the second ball is silent. Keep these vowel teams together when dividing words into syllables. For example, beaver, beaver. Another vowel team creates a new vowel sound. This is called a diphthong. 
Always keep diphthongs together when dividing words into syllable. For example, toilet. Toilet. The letter Y is treated as a vowel when dividing words into syllable. Crazy. Crazy. Prefixes and suffixes. Let's look at prefixes and suffixes. A prefix is a group of letters added to the beginning of a word. A suffix is a group of letters added to the end of word. When dividing words into syllables, a prefix is a syllable. A suffix is also a syllable. For example, relax, waiting. Study each word to decide if the beginning is a prefix or the ending is suffix. This will help you divide the word correctly. For example, baby, dirty. Hint. The Y in dirty is a suffix and is a syllable. Exercise 5, day 15. Learn to spell this word. Anxiety, anxiety, beacon, beacon, beauty, beauty, bias, bias, copy. Copy. Coupon. Coupon. Beacon. Beacon. Denial. Denial. Detail. Detail. Friendly. Friendly. Bosom. Bosom. Gleeful. Gleeful. Guilty. Guilty. Guitar. Guitar. Jointly. Jointly. Mighty. Mighty. Premium. Premium. Pronoun. Pronoun. Reliance. Reliance. Repeat. Repeat. Write each word, then use the rule to divide the syllable. Anxiety Beacon Beauty Bias Potting Coupon Beacon Denial, denial, detail, detail, friendly, fruition, gleeful, guilty, guitar, jointly, Mighty Premium Pronoun Reliance Repeat Anxiety 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 Beacon Beauty Beauty Bias Cotton Cotton Coupon Coupon Beacon Beacon Denier Detail Friendly, friendly, fruition, fruition, gleeful, gleeful, guilty, 
guilty. Guitar. 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 Jointly. Jointly. My team. My team. Premium. Premium. Pronoun. Pronoun. Reliant. Reliant. Repeat. Repeat. Now try to write a sentence using as many words as you can, but you may write only five sentences. And I will show you one example. Jacob is a friendly person. For more practice, write your spelling words on a sheet of paper using green marker. Choose one color for consonants and one for vowels. Write your words in the space boxes using the worksheet for this lesson available as a free download at monkeysbook.com slash classroom A. Then create right brain slash cards with your words. Then you can ask your teacher to read each spelling word, say the word out loud, and use it in a sentence. Or you can check your dictionary, or you can Google it anytime. <laughs>
there was a red house that was really old. Then I heard the shout. It was Sam. Then something has bounced. It was Sam's Todd. Exercise 2, day 17. Action verbs. A verb is a word that shows action or a state of being. Every sentence in the English language contains at least one verb. Let's look at name verbs or action verbs. Action verbs describe what someone or something is doing or feeling. Example of an action verb. Noah obeyed God. The word obeyed is a name verb because it describes what Noah did. Underline the action or main verb twice in the following sentences. Number 1. Noah built cages for the animals. The action is built. Number 2. Noah grew food for the animals. Grew is the action verb. Now, write two sentences about Noah using action verbs. Noah stored the foods in the boat. Noah saved his family. State of being verbs. State of being verbs show state of being rather than action. They link the subject to the predicate. Study the chart of state of being verbs. Is, am, are, was, were, be, been, been. Let's study this example. The city is weak. The state of being verb is links the subject city to the predicate with. Write a sentence using one of the state of being verbs. Susie is a student and is Link Suzy and student. Next, write a sentence using another state of being verb. Tommy is a wise man. Is link again the Tommy and the wise man. Exercise 3, day 18. Conjunction. Conjunctions are words that join words, phrases, and clauses together. They are easy to remember and recognize when you use the acronym FANBOYS. Fanboys for M nor but or yet so and these are the conjunctions. Alright, let's look at the example. Noah's family and two of each unclean animal kind boarded the ark. Write a sentence using a conjunction.
I ate dinner and did dishes. Write a sentence using a new conjunction. Jenny went to the store to buy the milk, but the milk was out of stock. Combining sentences. Conjunctions help us to combine sentences to improve our writing. Read the two sentences. The people watched the animals for the ark. The people did not repent. Now let's combine them. The people watched the animals board the ark and did not repent. We use the conjunction and to combine the two sentences into one. Now you give it a try. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Combine the two sentences into one using a conjunction. Jesus loves you and me. Exercise 3, day 18, just for fun. Shift these ciphers. Ciphers are defined as a message in code or a method of transforming a text to conceal its meaning. It's a secret code. They can be an exciting, challenging way of communicating. There are lots of different ways to create a secret code one of the easiest was also one of the most effective for a long time during the Roman Empire. Unless you also want to spend a long time trying to break or figure out the code, it is vital to have a key, the solution that helps you solve it. And here is the alphabet, and here's the code. In this key, you have the secret code based on letters of the alphabet to form words with spaces in between but simply shift it over from what the actual letter normally would be. For example, look at the key above and decipher the following word. The first letter is done for you. So say these G here let's find L is O so let's write 2 O and A here is D G stands for J L was again O Y is B. So it's good job. Okay. Now try this one. We have F is I. Z is C. X is A, K is N, A is B, L is O, I can do, X is O, A, I is L, I can do all, Q is P, E is H, F is I, K is A, D E 
G and P E S. I can do all things. Next, we have Q and Q is T P T and E is H O is R L is O R is U D is G E is H through through and E is H again F is I J is M P uh, P is W E is E is H L is O through him who and then D is G F is I I and then S is V G D is E and then P is S through him who gives J is M B is E who gives me P S Q P O is R who gives E K is M D is G Q is P E is H. So, through him who gives me strength. Right, good work. Exercise for day 19. Read pages 26 through 28 of the 10-minute Bible journey. Retell the Bible account to your teacher. You don't need to, but instead, make sure to focus on writing the six main points of the passage you read. And make sure to copy the key verse here. So let's read. Page 26. Soon, water would cover everything everywhere. But God saved Noah, his family, and the animals he sent to the massive wooden ark. Chapter 6 The whole earth changes. When the door closed, everything changed. Noah and his three sons labored together for the case, and by God's grace, they and their wives overcame great challenges in building the ark. Now the ship was finished and loaded. All four couples waited inside. Imagine the array of thoughts and emotions that probably struck Noah's family when, with no human assistance, the ark's thick door swung closed. Outside, many women may have stood in abrupt silence. Perhaps it was while some were laughing at the bizarre vessel and its eccentric builder that the great door unexpectedly sealed itself shut. Scoffers are everywhere, and some in Noah's day may even have been close relatives parents or siblings of Noah's daughters-in-law, the kindred of his wife or of Noah himself. Thankfully, God closed the door. Noah did not have to decide when the unbelievers would be locked up forever. Genesis tells us that Noah walked with God. When the ark after the door closed, 
he may have been praying when his family as the earth began to quake. Perhaps lightning bolts filled the darkened sky as blasts of thunder announced the impending deluge. On that day, earth essentially exploded as all the fountains of the great deep burst forth. One geophysics study suggests that superheated water and magma from underneath Earth's crust could have caused parts of the ocean to violently flash boil and blast supersonic jets of steam thousands of feet into the air then fall into pounding wind-driven gale. We do not know if Noah's family could hear screams of terror, but the worldwide judgment on man's wickedness had begun. Soon, the timbers that steadied the ark for decades began to fall away. Rising water enveloped the globe and released the earth's hold on the solitary wooden sanctuary. Animal sounds echoed throughout the ship and mixed with the words of the eight men and women on board. The creatures rested in safety while Noah's family cared for them and for one another. Meanwhile, everyone outside the ark died and was wiped from the face of the earth. Cloud, rain, and volcanic ash darkened the sun. There were 40 days and nights of current here downpour. As the worldwide cataclysm continued, life went on inside the ark. But research reveals that far beneath the shoreless ocean, enormous ruptures in Earth's crust ran for thousands of miles. Billions of animals and plants were entombed in sediments that hardened into the rough layers we see all over the world. Water continued to flood into the depths, and the sea continued to rise. Earthquakes and fury, magma spewing, volcanic eruptions ripped apart the original supercontinent, eventually spilling it into several smaller ones. Finally, on the 150 days, water covered everything everywhere, the fountains of the great deep stopped and the ocean began to withdraw. It had been five months and the ark now came to rest on one of the mountains of Arata. Nothing today is as it was before Noah's flood. Now, zigzag puzzle shapes of distant coastlines remind us of the astounding judgment that transformed our planet. Pre-flood cities, structures, and river channels are no more. Everything, even the place where the Garden of Eden had been, was wiped away by the violent waves of erosion and rapid movements of the continents. Only God's word adequately explains our planet's past. Now grounded amid receding waters upon the mountains of Ararat, the vital work of Noah's family continued and midway through the journey's seventh months, mountain tops became visible. In the middle of the journey's tenth months, Noah removed the covering of the ark he waited as the earth dried and vegetation spread. In total, it was more than a year before God told Noah's family and the creatures to leave the ark the Creator used to save them from the flood. However, God's timing and provision were perfect. The animals could now survive outside and begin to fill the stark, vacant world that stretched out before them. Here is the list of the primary passages, so make sure to read Genesis chapter 7, verse 10, through chapter 8, verse 17, and 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 5 through 7, and Psalms chapter 104, verse 8. And here's the key verse. The word that then existed perished, being flooded with water. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 6. 
Let's wrap up. Lord, it is hard to comprehend that as days became weeks and weeks became months, and as the ark moved in the storms, the ground far beneath the ocean surface broke apart, and the continents moved. Thank you for bringing the ark to rest atop one of the mountains of Ararat, and for keeping Noah's family safe as more months has passed, and you sent wind to dry the land. They must have been so happy to watch from the ark as grasses and flowers soon sprouted and spread. Thank you for the new start that you gave man after the flood. Name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Exercise 5, Day 20, Stress Syllables Let's take a moment and think about how we say syllables in verse. We learned that a closed syllable ends with a consonant and has a short vowel sound. An open syllable ends with a vowel and has a long sound. Read these words out loud. Beyond. Perfect. Earbook. Did you notice that you say one syllable a bit louder or maybe a bit higher pitch than the other syllable in the word? If not, say the words out loud again and listen for it. The part of the word you heard the loudest or in a higher pitch is called the stress syllable. Stress patterns. There are no rules for stress syllables that work with all words, but there are some patterns we can rely on. Let's study some of the patterns that can help us know what syllable to stress in a word. The stress syllable is marked with the stress sign symbol. The closed syllable is often stressed in a word. For example, volume, volume, result, result. Two syllable nouns and adjectives usually stress the full first. Two syllable nouns and adjectives usually stress the first syllable. For example, insect, insect, perfect, perfect. Two syllable compound nouns usually stress the first syllable. For example, quicksand. Quicksand. Now learn to spell these words. Airborne. Airborne. Clever. Clever. Earnest. Earnest. Alright. Alright. Come back. Come back. Explain. Explain. Appeal, appeal, cosmic, cosmic, eyesore, eyesore, banquet, banquet, deadline, deadline, flagship, flagship, brittle, brittle, descent. Descent, fortune, fortune, buzzword, buzzword, detect, detect, fragrant, fragrant, chronic, chronic, doctrine, doctrine. Exercise 5, day 20. Write each word and use the rules to divide the syllables. Mark the stress syllables. Hint. Is the word a noun or a verb? Is it a compound word?
airborne airborne all right all right appeal appeal banquet banquet brittle brittle buzzword buzzword chronic chronic clever clever come back come back cosmic cosmic deadline deadline descent descent detect detect doctrine doctrine earnest earnest explain explain I saw I saw flagship flagship fortune fortune fragrant fragrant let's make it fun write fun sentences until you have used all your spelling words Instead, you may write five creative sentences using these spellings. I will do three examples for you guys. Number one, all right, let's go to our grandparents' house. Number two, Joseph was a clever student. Number three, can you explain how to solve this problem, teacher Sarah? For more practice, write your spelling words on a sheet of paper using thin markers. Choose one color for consonants and one for vowels. Then, write your words in the shape boxes using the worksheet for this lesson available as a free download at mastersbooks.com slash classroom a dot. Create right brain flashcards with your words. Ask your teacher to read each spelling word, start the word out loud, and use it in a sentence. Instead, if you do not know how to read the spelling, go to Google or find the dictionary and then try to listen through it.
Lesson 5. Read pages 29 through 33 of the 10 minute Bible journey. Then we tell the Bible account to your teacher. We tell the bonus section about a rapid ice age to your teacher. Then copy the key verse. Chapter 7 The Rainbow Promise and the New Word. The century following the flood was filled with extreme and rapid change. More than seven months after the ark ran aground on the mountains of Ararat, God told Noah to release the animal. Emperor vegetation and un uninhabited new world waited. At last, the creatures followed each other out of the massive wooden vessel, one kind after another. The Bible does not say how steep the mountain was at the place where the ark came to rest, but clearly even the less nimble land animals such as the rhinoceros kind, the giraffe kind, elephants, and the various kinds of dinosaurs were able to make their way down. Once outside, Noah led his family in praise of God. He built an altar and sacrificed burnt offerings from each kind of the clean animals and birds which God sent in groups of seven. The Lord had unleashed his dreadful wrath on man's sin through the worldwide flood, but scripture says that he was pleased with Noah's offerings. God blessed Noah and his sons and told them to be fruitful, increase in number, and fill the earth. God revealed that fear and dread of man would now come upon all the animals of land, sea, and air. Mankind was originally vegetarian, but after the flood, God gave permission to eat meat as well. Perhaps the animals received this new fear of man to help evade his tendency to overkill and improperly manage the creatures since man would now be raising and hunting them for food. God also told Noah's family that because humans are made in God's image, no one is to murder lest he be punished by being killed himself. It was here in Genesis chapter 9 that God established the death penalty. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made man. This was nearly 850 years before God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Then the Creator promised that he would never again destroy all flesh with a flood. The beautiful rainbow in the clouds would be a sign of this promise. After all that they had experienced, the spectacular multicolored arch was surely an amazing sight to Noah and his family, and the sweet assurance of God's care for all people yet to be born. In the decades after the flood, Lush forgets grew around the world in temperate, well-watered environments. As Noah's children explored the new lands, some features reminded them of pre flood terrain. Old world names such as Euphrates and Tigris for two of the rivers were even used. In the decades after first few centuries after the flood, volcanoes continued to erupt, mountains continued to rise, and meteorites continued to blaze through the atmosphere and impact our planet's surface, but with rapidly decreasing frequency. The combination of warm oceans and cool summers was the key to massive snow and ice buildup, starting at the North and South Poles. The rapid post-flood ice age was about to begin. Earth's transformation was immense, ongoing, and undoubtedly fearsome at times. 
We still feel reside your effects today with ongoing volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and wild weather. By the point when Noah's grandsons were born, he had harvested a vineyard. All three of his sons probably lived nearby since all were present on the day when Noah became intoxicated on too much of his wine and fell asleep unclothed in his tent. When Ham apparently ridiculed Noah to Shem and Japheth, Noah became so enraged that he spoke a curse upon Ham's youngest son, Canaan. This damaged relationship between Noah and Ham may have played a part in the Babel rebellion that was soon to come. Primary passages Please read Genesis chapter 8, verse 18 through chapter 9, verse 28, chapter 10, verse 32, chapter 11, verse 1 through 9. Here is the key verse. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on him to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Genesis chapter 9, verse 16 through 17. Let's wrap up by prayer. Thank you for rainbows, God. Thank you for the beautiful promise that you will never again judge sin by a worldwide flood. What an amazing sign you gave, and it reminds us that you used a colossal ark to save Noah's family and preserve mankind from the waters of the flood. Thank you for eternal salvation, which can only come to us by Jesus, the true Savior. In the name of Jesus we pray, Amen. This is the picture of after the long flood, day is over. The rainbow is a reminder of God's promise that He will never again destroy all flesh with a flood. Bonus, a rapid ice age. Animals repopulated the planet quickly after the flood cataclysm. At the start, there were bountiful resources, wide open spaces, and very little predation. So, the multiplication of spaces exploded in every direction. Certain fossils and other evidences help researchers understand how the creatures spread rapidly across the globe. And by God's marvelous design of genetics, many thousands of new spaces, which are merely variations within the kinds flourish in some of the most remote and inhospitable climates and habitats. In countless instances, a new species within a created kind that was well suited for particular environments survived and multiplied, while species that were ill-equipped moved on or died out. This pattern continues today. The Bible documents in Genesis chapter 8 verse 4 that Noah's ark came to rest somewhere in the mountains of Ararat. We do not know whether the mountain on which the ark landed was unstable and volcanic, but we do know that the one modern mountain known as Mountain Ararat is a volcano. It may have risen during and or after the flood. We do not know. However, it is improbable that Noah's family originally settled in the cold, stark mountain range where the ark came to rest, possibly somewhere in the eastern region of modern-day Turkey. Genesis chapter 11 tells us that they migrated from Noah's farm to the plain of Shinar. Many believe that this plain was in modern-day Iraq, where the Bible states that the people congregated before God first their dispersion at the Tower of Babel. Snow soon fell in copious volumes of the newly exposed northern and southern lands. The severe incessant snowstorms combined with cooler summers caused by sunshine reducing volcanic ash and meteor impact dust 
would have resorted in big eye shades and glaciers. These covered huge portions of the northern and southern hemispheres, including areas such as the upper Midwest of the United States and substantial portions of Europe, all within only a few hundred years after the flood. Various evidences indicate that eruptions and earthquakes diminished as the movement of the Earth's tectonic plates swelled from meters per minute at the height of the flood to the present rate of only centimeters per year. It is clear that the world's immense ice sheets it is clear that world's immense ice sheets and glaciers reached their maximum thickness and breadth very quickly. One set of researchers based their findings on Osher's chronology, which places the flood at about 2350 BC and the understanding that the city of Ul was a coastal seaport when Abram was born there in about 2000 BC. The Persian Gulf was full or nearly full at the time because most of the Earth's huge glaciers had melted and released their stored water into the ocean. The researchers suggest that ice and massive glaciers accumulated within three centuries after the flood that melted and released their stored water to cover most intercontinental land bridges and many low-lying coastal areas during the next hundred years or so. Other researchers using glacier and weather data also support a recent and brief ice age but suggest the duration was 200 through 300 years longer. Both groups agree that the climate was erratic and there were extreme changes in weather during this period known as the Rapid Ice Age and that it was triggered by the global flood of about 4300 years ago. The Ice Age on the timeline. Note the blue background behind a portion of the included fold-out timeline. The immense changes that reshaped the Earth during the year-long flood led to the intense but short-lived period commonly called the Ice Age. Seeing the Ice Age in the light of the people who lived and migrated throughout the Earth during the time brings a deeper understanding of God's judgment in Earth's history and to the natural global warming that began only a few hundred years after the cataclysmic event experienced by Noah's family. The Earth has been warming since the Ice Age about 4,000 years ago. Exercise 1, Day 21 Sequencing Think of a book you have read. You may go and get it to help answer the question. I will show the example how to work on this. So for the example, we just finished reading about the long story of Noah's Ark. So how does the story start from Noah? Noah was the only righteous man while Everyone was evil. What happens next? God wanted to destroy the whole world. Noah build a giant ark the whole world was flooded and it took long time 
fifty. I'll eat her. And when fifty goes, she will die. God promised with a rainbow. that he owns with a punishment by what on the earth exercise 2 day 22 Helping verbs. Helping verbs come before the main verb in a sentence. They help us understand the main verb in the sentence by showing time and meaning. But they do not have meaning on their own. If your friend called you on the phone and said, I was, you probably wouldn't understand what he was trying to communicate. While was is a verb, it is not a verb that stands alone. I was petting the cat or I was watching a movie are examples of statements that make more sense. Petting and watching are the main action and was helps us to understand the action. Study the example of helping verbs in a sentence. Noah would look at the rainbow as a reminder of God's promise. The helping verb would helps us understand the main verb look. Study the chart of helping verbs. We have am, is, are, was, were, has, have, had, be, been, been, can, will, shall, do, does, did. Must, may, might, could, would, should. Did you notice the state of being verbs in the list? They sometimes act as helping verbs. Underline the helping verb and main verb twice in the following sentences. Number one, Noah and his family would populate the earth with their descendants. Helping verb is would. Popular is main verb. Number two, the ice age had cooled the earth. Had is helping verb. Cooled is the main verb. Number three, the earth has changed immensely. Has is helping verb. Changed is the main verb. Number four. Noah was angry with Ham. Was is helping verb. Angry is main verb. Next. Write a sentence using a helping verb and main verb. I was going to the market. Write a sentence using a new helping verb and main verb. Can you pass me the salt and pepper? Exercise 2, day 22. Memorize the helping verbs. To make it more fun, you can sing them to the tune of Jingle Bells. Helping verbs, helping verbs, they are 23. M is R was and were being the and being. 
have has has do does the shower shoot and wood there are five more helping birds may might must can could exercise three day 23 fragments independent clauses dependent clauses subordinate conjunctions we know that a sentence must express a complete thought it must have a subject and a predicate a sentence fragment cannot stand alone. It does not express a complete thought. It can be missing the subject, the verb, or both. For example, E saw every. An independent clause expresses a complete thought and can stand alone as a sentence. For example, animals repopulated the earth after the flood. A dependent clause can look like a sentence, but it is a type of sentence fragment. It cannot stand alone, even though it has a subject and a predicate because it does not express a complete thought. For the example, because they spread across the earth, it feels like you need to explain more to complete the sentence. And that is called a dependent clause. The dependent clause gives importance to the independent clause. It can show cause and effect. It begins with a subordinate conjunction. A subordinate conjunction joins the dependent clause to the independent clause in a sentence. Hint, subordinate means supporting or lesser. The independent clause is the main idea and the dependent clause is the lesser idea of the sentence. The subordinate conjunction joins the lesser idea to the main idea. The dependent clause supports the main idea. For example, the earth has been warming since the ice age. The first part of the sentence, the earth has been warming, is an independent clause. The second part of the sentence, since the ice age, is a dependent clause that begins with the subordinate conjunction since. There are many subordinate conjunctions. Study this chart of common subordinate conjunction. So again, since the ice age show the cause and the earth has been warming tells you the effect. An effect is more likely to be independent clause while cause can be more likely to be dependent clause. There are many subordinate conjunctions. Study this chart of common subordinate conjunctions. We have after, although, as, because, before, if, once, since, then, unless, until, when, whenever, where, while, and why. Exercise 3, day 23. Write a sentence fragment. Write an independent clause. Write a dependent clause. Remember to start with a subordinate conjunction. Write a sentence that includes an independent clause and a dependent clause. Johnny school. Johnny went to school because it was Monday. Johnny went to school because it was Monday. 
coordinate conjunction. Do you remember the conjunctions we learned about that use the acronym fanboys? For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. This type of conjunction is called a coordinate conjunction. It joins two or more sentences, main clauses, or words with the same importance. Hint. Coordinate means to bring together. A coordinate conjunction brings together two equal ideas. For example, Noah and his family migrate to the plain of Shinar. In this sentence, the coordinate conjunction joins equal words. Coordinate conjunction can also join two independent clauses. I sent massive glaciers melted, so water covered most intercontinental land bridges. Exercise 3, day 23. In this sentence, the coordinate conjunction joins two independent clauses. Write a sentence that uses the coordinate conjunction to join equal words. I play and sing. Write a sentence that uses the coordinate conjunction to join independent clauses. I play and sing. I did my homework and played soccer. During the time of Noah's great-great-great-grandson Pelag, the people were constructing a city with a very distinctive tower. Genesis 11 says that they wanted to make a name for themselves by building a structure to help them reach to the heavens, perhaps under the guise of being a place to sacrifice to God. It was likely a towering pyramid-like ziggurat. Before Babel was finished, God confused people with new languages. Scholars say that around 90 different root languages originated in this Middle Eastern region and that the 7,500 languages and dialects of today all came from those. Since God normally works through families, such as Noah's, it is likely that each immediate family spoke the same language. There may have been multiple families per language. No longer able to communicate with those who suddenly spoke differently and unable to finish the city, the different groups spread out and moved to other parts of the world. Now. Separated by language, the people expanded their domains and eventually established nations and empires. They took their knowledge of tower building with them as evidenced by the many ziggurats, pyramids, and tower mounds in countries near and far. It was at this time that the human gene pool was split apart and physical characteristics in the various groups became distinctive. A wide variety of facial bone structures, skin tones from very dark to very light, different textures and colors of hair, eye shape, and other features started to be dominant in various language groups and the regions where those groups settled. Today, we mistakenly call groups with distinctive features races. However, the Bible is clear that we are all of one blood and only one race exists, the human race. 
primary passages, Genesis chapter 11. Key verse. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Genesis chapter 11 verse 9. Let's wrap up by the prayer. Lord, when I think of men on the power of Babel working and talking side by side, I think of how dependent they were on each other for safety. One moment they were talking and the next day were stunned because they were hearing gibberish. Fear would have grown quickly and so would distrust. The people would have broken into groups based on who they could understand. That was a gentle way of forcing them to move out and begin filling the earth as you commanded a century earlier. Thank you for your grace and patience then, and now, dear Lord. Amen. Exercise 5, Day 25, Syllables Let's review and learn more about syllables. Remember, an open syllable ends with a vowel and has a long vowel sound. Divide an open syllable before the consonant. A vowel can form an open syllable all by itself. A closed syllable ends with a consonant and has a short vowel sound. Divide a closed syllable after the consonant. Divide the syllable between the two consonants when there are two consonants in the middle of a word. This is the VCCV pattern. Notice the vowel makes the short sound. Divide between the two consonants when the two middle consonants are the same. Next, special vowels. When two vowels next to each other have two different sounds, the first vowel is usually long. Divide between the vowels. Vowel teams are treated like one vowel. Usually the first vowel is long and the second vowel is silent. Keep these vowel teams together when dividing words into syllables. A vowel team that creates a new vowel sound is called a diphthong. Always keep a diphthong together when dividing words into syllables. The letter Y is treated as a vowel when dividing words into syllables. A prefix is a syllable. A suffix is also a syllable. Exercise 5, Day 25 Special Consonant Patterns Consonant blends such as CH, PH, SH, and TH that make one new sound are treated as one consonant and kept together when dividing words into syllables. For examples, Dolphin, Dolphin, Rather, Rather Special endings. When a word ends in col, c, k, l, e, divide before the l, e. For example, tackle, tackle. When a word ends with consonant l, e, except col, divide before the consonant. Examples, buggle, handle. Compound words. Divide compound words between the two words. For example, evergreen, evergreen. All right, let's learn to spell these words. Artwork, artwork. Hardship, hardship. Python, python. Breakout, breakout. Heckle. Heckle, smuggle, smuggle, cashmere, cashmere, hyphen, hyphen, temple, temple, coachman, coachman, lengthy, lengthy, typhoon, typhoon, crackle. Crackle, merchant, merchant, 
watchdog, watchdog, freshen, freshen, nestle, nestle, withdraw, withdraw, greco, greco, pamphlet, pamphlet. Write fun sentences until you have used all your spelling words. You may choose only five words and then you can write five sentences. I will write three sentences as examples. Tomorrow, there will be typhoon. Can you put this pamphlet at the back of the door? The title of this artwork is Peace. Exercise 5, day 25. Write each word and use the rules to divide the syllable. Art, word. Break out, break out. Cash meal, cash meal. Coachman, coachman. Crackle, crackle. Freshen, freshen. Freckle, freckle. Hardship, hardship. Heckle, heckle. Hyphen, hyphen. Lengthy, lengthy. Merchant, merchant. Nestle, Nestle. Pamphlet, Pamphlet. Python, Python. Smuggle. Smuggle Temple Temple Typhoon Typhoon 
watch dog watch dog withdraw withdraw for more practice write your spelling words on a sheet of paper using thin marker choose one color for consonants and one for vowels write your words in the shape boxes using the worksheet for this lesson available as a free download at mastersbooks.com slash classroom slash age dot then create right brain flashcards with your words ask your teacher to read each spelling word then spell the word out loud and use it in a sentence or you can even find a dictionary from internet and then try to listen the pronunciation.